Hi, I'm Gens from Spherical. Today I will talk about tab classes, a useful topic for every beginner Haskeller out there. You'll learn what tab class is, how to use one, and how to define your own instances of tab class. Let's imagine that you have been given a task to write a function that increases a counter by one in Haskell. How would you do that? Well, the first option is to create a function that takes an integer and increases it by one. It has a problem. It only works with the integer type that we assign it to. So we could instead make a polymorphic function. Unfortunately, this won't even compile. GHC tells us that to add one to a data type, the type, data type needs to have an instance of none. But what is none? As you might have guessed, it is a type class. Type class defines a set of methods that are shared across multiple types. For a type to belong to this type class, it needs to implement the methods of the type class. These implementations are ad hoc, meaning that different types have different implementations. If you have used interfaces in Java or traits in Rust, they will feel similar, but they're not quite the same. For example, here we have the num type class. It has all the usual methods you would expect for manipulating numbers, such as plus, minus, multiplication, and more. It doesn't necessarily need to implement all of these methods, since some of them depend on others. Each type class has a given minimal implementation, which you can see in the documentation. Once we have an implementation of the type class methods for a given type, we can say that the type has an instance of this type class. In Haskell, we can use type classes as constraints for functions. So to implement our counter for all numbers, we can constrain the input type by accepting only types that have an instance of num. To do that, we add num a and an arrow at the start of the type signature. Now it compiles. Using type classes to constrain functions is useful, but sometimes we want to add our own data types to type classes. So now we'll look at how you can define your own instances of type classes. In this video, we'll work with a record for storing Pokemon that has four fields, ID, name, type, and attributes. And here are some Pokemon that we can create with this record. But if we try to compare these Pokemon for equality, you'll see that we can't really do that. They do not implement the EQ type class. The EQ type class is the type class responsible for comparing for equality, and it has the methods that you would expect, equality and inequality. If you want to create an instance of the EQ type class for your own types, there are two ways to do it. You can either let the compiler derive it automatically or write it by yourself. To do the first one, you just need to add deriving EQ at the end of the definition of the data type. This will automatically create the EQ instance, that compares each field of the two records for equality. But let's say that we know that the ID field uniquely defines a Pokemon with all the types and abilities. In other words, two Pokemon with an equal ID will have all the other fields equal as well. In this case, we can define our own instance to compare only the IDs. To define the type class instance, you need to write instance, then the name of the type class you're defining the instance for, then the name of the type you're defining the instance for, and then the where keyword. After that, put the definitions of methods in the case of EQ, the minimal implementation is to implement the equals method. Our implementation will compare the ID fields of the Pokemons for equality. Now let's look at some of the basic type classes of Haskell, some of which you have already met in this video. EQ is used to compare things for equality, or it adds the possibility to order things, to determine whether one thing is greater than, lesser than, or equal to another. Show and read are type classes that are used to convert things to strings and back. As a beginner Haskeller, their methods with the the same names are ones that you should know. These methods, as you guessed, convert stuff to strings and back. Finally, we have the num type class, which contains useful arithmetic operations for working with integers. And that's all the information you need to start working with type classes in Haskell. In the future, we'll cover more advanced type classes such as monoid, functor, applicable, and monad. If you don't want to miss those videos, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell.